Yeah, Linnaeus is absolutely brand new. Uh, it was my own brainstorm. I was talking to my friend Gary Hull, um, very famous synthesizer programmer and a technician. I share a lab with him at Universal Audio. And Gary was bugging me about uh, the EMU 1122 Universal Active Filter, a state variable filter that is legendary and never been reproduced. He says, why don't you make one of those for the modular? And I said, I want to do something new, Gary. And uh, as I was talking to him, I had this idea. It's uh, it turns out I had not ever heard of it, but it has been done before to put a linear input into a filter so you can modulate the resonant frequency linearly, which is musically very useful. But then I had the real brainstorm, which is how about if we make that through a through zero linear modulation, and then you could get all these kind of chowning-like tones, you know, FM type of tones um, that are really very rich and timbrely uh, done and through a bit of research I've managed to get a tame a state variable filter so that it is actually stable when you take it into negative frequency and it sounds just great. I'm very excited about the sound there. And Linnaeus is coming along very well so I'm thinking probably there the end of June, early July. So they'll be in stores pretty darn soon. And the Linnaeus is $3.99. Linnaeus. Linnaeus. Um, and we'll have lots of fun seeing how people pronounce that word. There's lots of different pronunciations, but uh, Linnaeus is the one that seems to be the most popular. So we'll be happy with that. Um, Linnaeus is a state variable filter. Um, it is stereo, so it has two independent filters in it. Um, the state variable filter has resonance and uh, um, uh, frequency control and the resonance can be exceedingly high. So let's, um, I'm going to change this patch around just a little bit here. I want to get some uh, gain control here as well because it can get pretty loud. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bias um, the uh, output of the Trident down pretty low and put a um, um, sawtooth wave in here. Let me grab this real quick so we can see the output over here on the oscilloscope. And what I want to see over here is a sawtooth wave. That looks like a sawtooth wave. Let's shrink down its amplitude a little bit. And um, synchronize to it. There we go, now we can see the sawtooth wave. And let's turn this up and we should be able to listen to it as well. We hear it yet? Should be going click, click, click. There it is. So it's, it's, right now it's just a low pass filtered sawtooth wave. I can change the, the cutoff frequency down on the filter. We can see it rounding there and hear the sound get kind of thump like. But state variable filters get interesting when you start turning up the resonance. So let's turn the resonance up. We can see the pink in here, and now we can should be able to hear it going ding, 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 ding. And it can get ridiculously resonant here. I'm going to slow this guy down a little bit. Now, before I get into the really cool stuff about Linnaeus, I'll just mention the way the output structure works here. It's a stereo filter. We're using in a mono mode here. The, the left is normal and to the right. So we're getting a stereo output. We can change the frequency response to high pass, up through band pass, up into notch filters and shelving filters in a nice continuous way. And we can control the left and the right independently. So I'm just controlling the right, not the left. And whatever you left the left set at, it will stay there, even when you turn the module off. When we go to modulate it, we can put in a uh, control voltage into the modulation input uh, over here. And uh, either modulate both of the filters in tandem, or only modulate one with a control voltage. Or we can flip one side so you can do the modulations backwards and forth, which gives you nice stereo effects. So even if you're only working in mono, you can use this as a mono to stereo type of thing. But the really exciting thing about Linnaeus is the, uh, um, uh, the linear control of frequency. That's why it's called Linnaeus. Um, this uh, being able to sweep the frequency through zero produces some really interesting modulations. Internal to Linnaeus, there's a modulation oscillator, and you can force that modulation oscillator to track 
the response frequency, and that gives you very nice uh, harmonic ratios of the modulation. I'm going to begin by turning the modulation oscillator way down in frequency, and then turn it up to a sine wave, and now let's turn up the modulation index. So there we hear it moving around a little bit in frequencies. Now if I start tuning this, we now begin to get more audio effects of the modulation. I need a little bit more volume here. So there's modulation index low. Instead, I'd take the modulating oscillator up to a higher frequency. Got to find a sweet spot here. So in addition to being able to use the internal modulation oscillator, we can uh, put in an external, such as another oscillator. Let me grab the triangle wave out of the uh, trident up here, and I've got these oscillators tracking. So let's take this triangle wave right here and use it as an external. So now instead of matching the mo linear modulation up to the uh, frequency of the filter, the resonant frequency, let's match it to the frequency of the excitation. So I turned on the cue so it doesn't go too nuts in here. Br bring up our sawtooth wave so it's audio frequency. And now we're going to turn on the modulation index with just a um, external linear input. Do a little fine tuning here. So again, really interesting, very unusual timbral effects out of this filter. Uh, I've only played with it a little bit since we just brought it to the show floor yesterday, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it.